Hello and welcome to my new video about doing graphics in Command Prompt. In this video I would like to showcase and share with you some of my demos and talk about the ASCII graphics engine that I've been working on in my spare time. You can find all of the source code on my GitHub and the link is in the description. This video will be followed by a set of tutorials explaining in more detail how these effects are implemented. So if you're interested, stay tuned. There's something about ASCII art that I find rather appealing. Perhaps it's the creativity, or maybe the blocky retro look. Anyway, the popularity of things like ASCII shaders that turn images into visual representation of text suggests that I'm probably not alone. My initial goal was just to create some silly ASCII effects in Windows Console. And I wanted to use high-level language like C-sharp, no other libraries, no graphics APIs, no Windows GDI, just plain Windows command prompt with C-sharp and Visual Studio. What basically started as a small evening after hours project grew eventually more interesting. And I was surprised by the response to my ray marching in Windows console video. It got some interest on YouTube, with viewers asking me to share the code or do some tutorials. So I thought, why not turn this little silly project into, well, larger silly projects that others can use and maybe even learn from. The first step was to get all of the low-level boilerplate stuff out of the way and wrap it in a nice, simple and clean API. Then, on top of that, I added some standard algorithms useful for graphics. These are typically provided by most graphics libraries, so I thought my engine should support them too. All are implemented from the scratch, including vector and matrix operations. There surely are more efficient ways to implement them, but the goal here was transparency, so others can see how things work under the hood and also easily copy and paste the bits of code if they need to. It was also a great opportunity for me to revisit some of the core graphics techniques that I use all the time, but they are usually handled by hardware and accessed via APIs such as OpenGL. For example, making rasterization work around the limitations of Windows Console, which uses surprisingly slow rendering algorithm, was quite a challenge. But more about it later. While I was working on the project, I've come across some great C++ videos doing ASCII graphics. One of my favorite creators who has plenty of videos covering this subject is One Lone Coder. I really recommend you check out his channel if you are into this type of content. Anyway, in C Sharp, fast console graphics is a bit more tricky. Natively available console.write is just too slow to do anything in real time, and there are no obvious alternatives available out of the box. In C and C++, we can access the console via Win32 API, specifically via a set of functions from kernel32 DLL. We cannot do it as easily in C Sharp, but luckily, there is a way. We can invoke C functions in .NET using interop services. And why do we want to do this? Well, that's because instead of drawing each character on the screen one by one, like console.write does, which is very slow, we want to draw our characters to some sort of text buffer first. And once we finish drawing the entire frame, send the buffer to the console. By the way, this is pretty much how drawing works in applications using OpenGL, DirectX and some other graphics libraries too. Instead of text, they operate on pixels of course, 
but the idea remains the same. We call it double buffering. And to achieve it, we use write console output function from Win32 API. It will help us move all of our characters and their attributes from our memory buffer to the console buffer. This function comes from kernel32 DLL, along with another one, create file, which we'll use to obtain the handle to the console window. These two are the most important functions from Win32 API that we'll be using. And here, you can see how we expose them to our C-sharp application. We also need few structures that we'll have to pass as parameters to these functions. The important part is that they have to mimic the memory layout of their Win32 counterparts. I will be covering this in more detail in the future tutorial series. You can also check the Nostalgia Engine source code. It's open source with no parts precompiled. This specific bit is a part of the screen buffer class from the core directory. Anyway, Win32 API also provides other functions that allow us to change console buffer size, font type, character width and height. We can even define the RGB value of each color in the 16 color palette. There's one important limitation though. Windows console can only display 16 colors at one time. So one of the challenges that we face is to find some workaround to produce greater color depth. Like this. So we have some trade-offs and few tricks used here, but they aren't particularly complicated. Still, I think they're quite effective. You probably already know most of them and can figure out the rest by simply looking at the code. Nevertheless, I will expand on this in a future tutorial series. So in short, there's a bunch of code needed to allow C-sharp applications to talk directly to the console. And this includes fast unbuffered input handling, which C-sharp console is not really good at. There are also commonly used graphics routines and algorithms mentioned before. We also have sound, resource management, and resource files, like models and textures. Then we have scene abstractions so commonly used in game engines. And it can be neatly packed in a library or a game engine. And this is what Nostalgia Engine is, a library for doing silly things in a console. It's open and transparent and can be used in parts or as a whole. It's still a bit of work in progress and I gradually keep adding more stuff but I think it's usable at this point. Apart from the basic stuff I've mentioned before, it also supports sprites, OBJ models, simple lighting, and even has support for arithmetic operators on color palettes to achieve fancy effects like fade-ins and fade-outs. There's also basic ASCII GUI like Windows text boxes, open and safe file dialogues, etc. Rasterizer, Raycaster and Texture Editor are extensions which are bundled along with the engine. And this is to make it more modular, so parts that might be irrelevant for a particular application can be simply removed. There's also plenty of demos bundled together, including everything shown here. For now, the engine supports only basic sound beeps, but I started working on a sound synthesis. I should also mention the separate tool for converting images from full color PNGs or JPEGs into the format that Nostalgia Engine can understand. If you remember, we only have 16 colors, so we have to be creative. 
There's a quite an interesting algorithm involved called K-means, which my tool uses to find the 16 color palette that represents the converted image best. We also have brightness component that we calculate in HSV color space. I will cover this soon, but for now, you can find all of the code on my GitHub. This includes my basic c -sharp implementation of K-means algorithm from the scratch, which shouldn't really be too hard to follow. Anyway, I will eventually add more comprehensive documentation as I go along with the series. I hope you enjoyed this little intro and find the code useful. For the remainder of the video, I will leave you with some demos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.